Good evening and welcome to this community meeting to share the designs for City of Santa Rosa's local road safety plan for North Dutton Avenue corridor between West Third and West College Avenue. I'm Rob Sprinkle, the director, deputy director of traffic engineering with the City of Santa Rosa, and I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Live interpretation can be heard on the Spanish channel, and you could join the Spanish channel by clicking on the interpretation icon that resembles a globe in the Zoom toolbar on your screen. Closed captioning, captioning is also available at the bottom of your screen. Before we begin the presentation, our interpreter, Pablo, will translate this introduction, followed by our host, Kimberly, or Steve, excuse me, with the City of Santa Rosa, who explain how the meeting will work. Pablo? Buenas noches y bienvenidos a esta reunión comunitaria. Eh, para el plan local de seguridad vía la ciudad de Santa Rosa, que se centra en el corredor de North Dutton Avenue, entre West Third Street y West College Avenue. Soy Rob Sprinkle, subdirector de Ingeniería de Tráfico de la ciudad de Santa Rosa, y quiero agradecerles por acompañarnos esta noche. La interpretación en vivo se puede oír en el canal de español, Puede unirse al canal de español haciendo clic en el icono de interpretación que aparece en, como un globo terráqueo a este momento en la barra de funciones de su pantalla de Zoom. Eh, antes de comenzar la presentación, nuestra anfitrión Shelly eh, con la ciudad de Santa Rosa eh, explicará cómo funcionará la reunión. All right. Thank you, Pablo. Um, currently in our uh, Spanish room, uh, we have Gilberto who is translating into Spanish. As community members join the meeting, you will be participating as an attendee. Your microphone and camera will be muted. Only today's panelists will be viewed during the meeting. At the end of our presentation, Rob will open up the meeting for public questions and comment. At that time, you will be directed to raise your virtual hands and all comments will be taken in the order they appear on the screen. Any written comments will be read at the end of the public comments. Please refrain from raising your hand or commenting until the end of the presentation, as we are unable to respond during the presentation. Please know the City of Santa Rosa is committed to creating a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption. We will not tolerate any hateful speech or actions and will monitor that everyone is participating respectfully or they will be removed. If necessary, we will also immediately end the meeting. This meeting is being recorded and will be placed on the city website following the meeting. Thank you, Steve. Once again, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Your participation and your input are important to us as we share with you the design for improving safety on our city roadways for all users. This design is based on community feedback from our meeting and survey this past spring. We'll start tonight's meeting with an overview of the agenda and topics we plan to cover, the project description, the time frame. We'll go through the presentation of the design options. We'll then open it up for public comment and go over next steps. So for starting with the project description. So tonight, as I mentioned, this is the local road safety plan that we are sharing with you tonight. And we're sharing with you the design options or the design that we came up with on North Dutton Avenue. These improvements will include um, uh, bike lane installations, lane reductions, and pedestrian enhancements, enhancements along this corridor. For the time frames, we're actually unsure of the implementation time of this project. I say this because we did apply for a grant to construct this project on a faster pace over the summer, but we recently heard that we were not awarded that grant. So that doesn't mean that we won't do the project and it won't get done. We just need to find another funding source to be able to proceed with the construction of the project. So we may also look at segmenting this project into smaller pieces as funding becomes available. 
So our intent tonight is to continue to move forward with the design and, and show that to you where we are, to gather your feedback, and to share with you the feedback that we did here um, in the spring and how that helped uh, focus our design. So following the presentation, we'll open the meeting up for comments, questions, and concerns. And as I go through the presentation, if you take note of the slide number, which will be in the bottom right hand corner of the slides. If you want to comment on a specific slide, then we could reference that during the question and answer period. So now we'll begin with the presentation. Next slide, please. So the local road safety plan is a plan, is a grant that we received to focus safety improvements on specific corridors throughout the city. These corridors were identified in our bicycle and pedestrian master plan and included 4th Street between Farmers Lane and E Street, Montgomery Drive, between Hammon Drive and Alderbrook Drive, Stony Point Road between West 3rd and Sebastopol Road, College between 4th Street and Cowell, North Dutton between West 3rd and West College Avenue, and then a section of the Roseland Creek Trail. And the important port portion of why we are, are gathering this information is that it makes us eligible to apply for various grants and specifically the HSIP grant, which is the Highway Safety Improvement Program grant, which is where we do get uh, portions of our funding for these type of bicycle and pedestrian safety improvements. Next slide, please. So now I'm going to go over the length of the corridor, talk about the existing conditions on the segments, and then go to what we're planning to install as, as far as our proposed designs for the segments and um, listen to, and then we'll get into the, the question and answer and feedback from the public. So the first section, if you wanna orient yourself, West College is actually to the left and North Dutton is in the uh, left right plane of the, of the aerial shown. And section A is where we, we took um, the cross section of the roadway showing the existing conditions. So currently there's two lanes in each direction, travel lanes, a center turn lane, and a parking lane on the west side, excuse me, on the east side of the street. Next slide, please. So th through the feedback we heard on our initial design proposals and um, feedback from the meeting, we modified the design that we had previously proposed to install uh, protected bike lanes in the southbound direction, where we have a six foot bike lane, a nine foot buffer with a vertical element, 11 foot travel lane, maintaining the two way left turn lane, a southbound travel lane, and then a parking lane. And the parking lane would be set um, away from the curb with a buffer and bike lane against the curb, again, uh, producing a protected bike lane along that side of the road. So this is definitely safer for cyclists um, and it helps create a buffer for the, even for the pedestrians who are using the sidewalk along this section of street. It adds traffic calming measures to help slow speeds by narrowing the travel lanes um, and still provides for the, the parking that's currently there without any, any elimination. We also looked at the capacity of the roadway and the capacity does allow for us to remove a travel lane and keep the same um, flow of traffic. At the actual intersection of college, we would maintain the, um, the two travel lanes in the northbound direction and we would be merging the travel lanes in the southbound direction from two lanes to one lane in that segment, just directly south of the intersection of West College. Next slide, please. The next, next cross section that we looked at is the cross section um, just north of West 9th Street near Maxwell Court. This, uh, this section of roadway currently has, again, two travel lanes in each direction and a two-way left-hand turn lane. And there is a small shoulder on the east side of the roadway. Next slide, please. This section of road we were also proposing that we install buffered bike lanes in both directions with 11 foot travel lanes, 12 foot center turn lane, 
um, and again, providing the extra buffer for bikes and pedestrians along this segment. Now, there is also an opportunity that we could potentially add some additional parking on the east side of the roadway to continue that in this direction around the corner, and that's something that we're looking at as well. Next slide, please. So this segment of roadway is just south of West 9th Street. And before I move into this segment, I just want to comment on the intersection of, of West 9th Street and Dutton. So that would actually, um, instead of maintaining two travel lanes in the north and south direction right at the intersection, we would be converting one of those travel lanes to a right turn drop lane in both the north and south directions. Moving further south or on the right on this picture, looking at the cross section of the existing conditions, we have parking on the west side of the street here, two 10 foot travel lanes, 11 foot center turn lane, and then two foot travel lane, two foot, two 10 foot travel lanes in the northbound direction in this segment of roadway. This, this section of roadway is a little bit narrower than the other section. It's only 58 feet in width. Next slide, please. So in this section of roadway, we're planning to install uh, buffer bike lanes in the southbound directions that, it, that would be protected um, with the parking from the residents along that section of roadway. So there would be a six foot southbound bike lane, a three foot buffer, then the, then the parking, 11 foot travel lane in the southbound direction, a 10 foot two way left turn lane, and then a northbound 11 foot travel lane with a three foot buffer and six foot bike lane. So the northbound section of this would not have enough room to put in an actual protected bike lane on this segment. Next slide, please. Oh, I'm sorry, keep, keep it here for a second. I also wanted to mention that um, also along this segment, um, we'd be looking to install a, some pedestrian improvements at and a rectangular flashing rapid, a rectangular rapid flashing beacon or RRFB at the West 9th Street intersection. Um, we're also looking at uh, crossings at Herbert and at, at installing crosswalks at Herbert and Boyce Street in this segment, which is related to feedback we received from the public in the last meeting. Next slide, please. So moving on to um, the final segment, which is closer to the intersection of West 3rd. This segment has um, parking on the west side for some apartments that are towards west third. Um, two 12 foot travel lanes, a 12 foot center turn lane, and a 12 foot northbound lane, and then a 13 foot northbound lane. So this is a little bit wider than the rest of the segments. Next slide, please. So this segment of roadway we're proposing to maintain the two southbound um, travel lanes with the two-way left turn lane. And the reason for that is our observations of these of this intersection, this southbound direction does back up quite a bit in the evening peak and sometimes in the AM peak. And during that time, um, we wanna maintain the capacity of that intersection. And if we reduce it down to a single lane, then that will actually increase the queue length quite a bit um, to the, in the north on Dutton. And by doing that, we want to avoid uh, people trying to go through the neighborhood because I think it'll be faster to, to go through the neighborhood and take an alternate route if they're that far back in the queue. So we want to maintain that they um, have the ability to stack and, and be as efficient as possible at that intersection. Even with maintaining those two lanes in the southbound direction, we're still able to have a travel lane in the northbound, a single travel lane in the northbound direction after it merges, just after we pass the intersection of West Third Street. We have the two-way left turn lane and quite a large buffer lane on the northbound direction and a protected bike lane with a buffer and parking in the southbound direction. Next slide, please. So the design that we came up with is a result of um, the meeting that we held back in 
um, the spring, I believe it was in, in March. And the, some of the community feedback that we received from that meeting and from the survey that we sent out was that the road diet is a good solution for this roadway in many people's opinion. They wanted us to consider adding crosswalk at Boyce, Decker and Hewitt, um, which, which we are doing. Uh, they wanted to add flashing beacons at the crosswalks again, which is one is planned for West 8th Street. We would likely put one at Hewitt and at Boyce if those were installed as well. And the reason we didn't consider putting a crossing at Decker is if we do put a crossing or at Boyce and we have one at West 9th Street, Decker is in a three street. It tees into um, Dutton. So we do have two good options on either side of that street to continue in a direction of travel that would be coming from one of those two directions. Also comments received was to maximize the, the buffered and protect the bike lanes where possible. And we did that. We and to consider shifting the parking adjacent to the traveling, which we are also showing in our proposed design. Slowing the speed of vehicles, which by narrowing the lanes and providing only the single lane of travel, we do we get rid of the, the racing field when you have two vehicles um, competing with one another potentially. And um, by narrowing the lane, it also helps to control the speeds of vehicles. Um, the merge in the northbound direction soon after West uh, third intersection was uh, the the distance there before the merge was minimized, which was a comment we heard. It was still meeting the standards, um, and then to remove the sidewalk gaps, and that's something that we um, are also looking to do. There's some sidewalk gaps on the west side of the street between Ninth Street and uh, Decker, and then again between West Eighth and Trowbridge. Um, install leading pedestrian pedestrian intervals. And I believe this is something that um, our technicians may have taken care of at uh, West 9th Street. And I'll check back on that. And to maintain, and then another comment we did, we, only had, we had a couple of these comments that they wanted us to maintain the existing travel lanes. And to help with this comment, we, we did the observations and we looked at locations where we felt that maintaining the existing travel lanes would benefit. And so we did that in the southbound direction at West 3rd and in the northbound direction at college to maintain the capacity through those intersections. Next slide, please. So we did get some community feedback from the survey responses. We received 17 surveys of those 17. 10, uh, their top priority was to improve bicycling. Three was to uh, improve the walking and the walking, the pedestrian experience. Three wanted us to retain the vehicle lanes and one wanted to improve the aesthetics along this section of roadway. Next slide, please. So with that, I would like to open it up to public comments. However, before I begin, I'd like to ask Steve to review how you can participate by asking the live questions and, and giving your comments. All right, terrific, Rob, thank you. Once Rob calls for public questions or comments, we will announce for anyone wishing to ask a question or make a comment to raise their hand in Zoom. For individuals participating in the meeting by telephone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. We will then call on the public one by one who have their Zoom hand raised. Your microphone will be unmuted, so you may ask your question. Once you've raised your hand and asked your question or shared your input, your hand will be lowered and your microphone muted. Great, thanks, Steve. Are we ready for our first question? Indeed we are. The first person in our queue is uh, Jean Byers uh, Spritz. Hello, Jean, your, your, um, our, your microphone has been unmuted. You can state your name for the record if you so choose and then ask your question or make a comment. Okay, well, thank you. Um, yes, I'm Jeannie Bryce Brates, and thank you for this opportunity. Um, I would encourage someone to drive the streets at night during a rain and see how the reflectors on the streets do nothing to help a person unfamiliar with the area on where to drive. Um, you know, there are some more powerful ones in front of Wally's garden there, I think the county section, that actually do reflect, but some of these white bumpity bumps do nothing. 
and especially at night and during a rain. I also hope that the city is looking into the safety and beautification of that area because my husband and I walk that and sometimes we end up in the street hoping we don't get a hit and run because it's impossible to walk the sidewalks. You know, there's rose bushes that if you're on blood thinner, you have to watch out for. There's places a wheelchair can't go through. You have to walk single file and not enjoy walking with your partner. The trees don't have eight foot head clearance. You know, and I'm not here just to complain because there are ways to remediate these. Maybe do some marketing on Earth Day and Arbor Day for homeowners to go out and check their sidewalks or actually have city employees do something when a complaint is sent. I sent one over a year and a half ago and still I'm waiting for something to happen on that area of the sidewalk. Increase the fines and notifications to homeowners. Just some way to lessen the chance of me getting hit on the street because I can't use the sidewalks. Um, and that's my comments. Thank you. Thanks, Jeannie. Okay, great. Our next um, our next person in the queue is Chris Eggers. Uh, Chris, your microphone has been unmuted. You can state your name for the record if you so choose, and then ask your question or make a comment. Hi, this is Chris Eggers, and the first thing I want to say is, wow, um, this is amazing. I'm really impressed with the work that's been done and the input that has been incorporated. Thank you so much. Um, I have one comment and then uh, two questions. Um, the first is if there isn't funding, um, is there a way to do a quick build to test the concept before actually doing a permanent build and the quick build might uh, save some money and also give a chance to make sure that these concepts work before making it more permanent? Um, the other question is, um, is the are the bike lanes contiguous from um, West College Lane to Third Avenue? I'm assuming that they're continue they continue the whole route. They're just the only change is between buffered and protected. Um, well, maybe there's three questions. Oh, the other question is northbound from Santa Rosa Creek to West. Third, um, that doesn't make sense. Sorry, my question doesn't make sense even to me. Oh, from southbound from Santa Rosa Creek to West Third, why, uh, why isn't, why isn't that section uh, protected? It's just buffered. And I'm sorry, my notes are confusing to me. Maybe you can figure that out. But um, all in all, it looks really amazing and um, good work. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. So I think I can cover those questions for you. So we actually did apply for the grant we applied for was actually a quick build grant that we were denied. So, um, but I do understand your your concept about you know trying to get some striping on the ground is as soon as possible, and and that's the, that's the funding we need to to search for. Um, the bike lanes are contiguous along this entire segment, and that yet they will just be changing from a protected to a buffered in several locations. And then on the west side, yes, from the creek to uh, west third, there would be a portion that's buffered and then with a large buffer, and then it would go to a buffered with the parking adjacent. So it would be protected via the parking. So it would be a protected bike lane um, along the apartments where the parking's allowed. And then um, it actually right at the intersection, it narrows a little bit. Um, it's it's kind of has a weird uh, curb alignment and it does narrow a little bit right at the intersection west third where it would just be a buffered bike lane to a bike lane right at the intersection but the majority of it would be the majority of the, an entire segment would be uh, buffered or protected uh next caller please or next hand all right the next uh, person in our queue is eris weaver Eris, your microphone's been unmuted and uh, you can state your name for the record if you so choose and then ask your question or make a comment. Uh, thank you, Eris Weaver with the Sonoma County Bicycle Coalition. Good job. 
Um, I am extremely pleased to see the combo of buffered and protected bike lanes all through here. Uh, thank you for hearing all of our comments and implementing them. I know that this will be the first time we've had parking protected um, bike lanes, and that might take some folks, you know, especially drivers, a little time to get used to, but I think this is so the right direction that we're wanting to go. So I'm very happy to see all of that. Um, tagging on a little bit what Ms. Egger said in, in terms of visualizing the whole flow. Um, I, I know that for, for you engineering types looking at those cross sections is the way that you plot things out, but that's not our experience as we ride down the street. So what I keep wishing that I could see in any of these presentations is like an aerial view of the whole project you know, with maybe as it is, and then the new striping overlaid on top so that I can get a sense of the whole thing. It is really hard to visualize that when you're looking at little chunk by chunk by chunk. So that's just a, a wish list for um, future presentations that would help um, folks maybe uh, get a better sense of seeing how it'll be all the way through and not just at individual spots. Um, and then just my last comment is not so much about this piece, but really hoping that um, it's not going to be too long before some of these kind of improvements are um, extended south of this project area, because um, I know that needs some work as well. A Shepherd Elementary student was the victim of a hit and run crossing Dutton on his way to school um, not that long ago. Uh, and there's uh, definitely a lot of improvements that need to be done in some of those uh, underserved neighborhoods. Thank you. Great, thank you, Iris. And um, I will try to get a more comprehensive design plot for that when this goes to the bike board, uh, which will be, which I'm going to cover in a little bit, but which will, which will be in December. Um, and, but I'm not going to guarantee it. But I will. I'll try to get. I'll try to get that design ready and 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 plotted for that meeting. Steve, next person, please. Mm -hmm. The next person in our queue is Larry. Larry, your microphone has been unmuted. Um, you can state your ne uh, name for the record, if you so choose, and then ask your question or make a comment. Thank you, Larry Fields. Uh, my wife and I are residents of the uh, Trowbridge neighborhood, and uh, we would second Jeannie on the condition of sidewalks and the walkability of the neighborhoods, which is the primary reason I tuned in. Um, Love the plan, love the bike paths. A uh, little bit concerned about the reduction of lanes uh, beyond the creek. We often find evening times, especially in poor weather, uh, the traffic backs up beyond our street on the entrance. Uh, mostly this is just feedback and I'm not sure where your authority or, or planning goes, but uh, I understand much of the county areas or small strips of it in there, uh, sidewalks and road maintenance uh, previously under the county had been lacking. There's no curbs and gutters. Uh, streets are patched potholes. Um, would love to find a way into at least the awareness of your department on fixing those things. And uh, I'll wind up on just the sidewalks themselves. If the project is limited in scope to the Dutton corridor, uh, other than the Creek Trail, I, I really like the design part of it, the bike paths. I didn't hear a lot of mention about what the sidewalks would be. And even as I'm looking at this picture, um, aesthetically, I appreciate the value of trees. But uh, in, in terms of walkability, those are single lane sidewalks. I think someone else mentioned being forced to walk into the street. Um, uh, uh, the ability to you know, walk side by side with a companion on the sidewalks, I think adds aesthetically to the neighborhood and certainly to the safety of a main corridor like this for pedestrians. Uh, there's a lot starting to develop in the downtown Santa Rosa area. Uh, these neighborhoods have been long neglected and I think deserve some attention for the 
you know, the livability for the current residents as they age and uh, need to have that uh, um, uh, pedestrian friendly community that allows them access to the downtown and the railroad square area. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks, Larry. Yeah, our first focus would be um, for the gaps in sidewalk where we, where we don't have. Sorry. Uh, there we go. Uh, the first focus would be on the um, sidewalk gaps that we where we currently don't have any sidewalk is where we focus um, the effort for, for this project. Um, and this project is limited to the scope for this current project is limited to Dutton Avenue between um, College and West Third. Uh, if there are, if you do have specific potholes, we do have um, a, a pothole line, or you can call our standard line, which is 707 543 3800, and report a pothole in a location, maybe with the address. Or you could also go on to our city website, and there's a location, I believe it's if you put in my Santa Rosa, I believe that will help you guide you to um, a, a location where you could report a pothole as well. Um, okay, I think that I think I got most of your things, and thank you for thank you for your comments. All right, the next person in our queue is Stephanie Myler. Stephanie, your microphone's been unmuted. You can state your name for the record if you so choose, and then ask your question or make your comment. Um, Stephanie, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, Steve, I, I just got a message from our translators that because of timing, we want to go ahead and switch them. So if we can take a moment to do that before we entertain Stephanie's comments, please. Definitely. Give me just one moment. Thank you everyone for your patience. Okay, sorry about the delay. So again, Stephanie, your mic is unmuted. You should be able to um, uh, state your name for the record if you wish, and then ask your question or make a comment. Hi, this is Stephanie Myler, and um, yeah, this is really great as anyone that lives in this area or right off North Sutton, as I do, knows that um, it's a big problem. So this is great news and it looks like a great plan. Um, I do have a question. I've been trying for several years, literally. I live on Saracen, which if you look at the design of that street, it's, a, you know, we all know that people speed down North Dutton at high speeds. And because of the poor design of Saracen, where it connects with North Dutton, they literally have no need to slow down. So they come off the speeds of North Dutton onto Saracen, which is 25 miles an hour. And, you know, uh, there's been several accidents that have happened. Car drove into a business that's right across the street from me on Saracen. Someone drove into my fence. And if it wasn't metal, they probably would have been in my living room. You know, every time anyone on that street comes out of their driveway, they feel like they're taking their life in their hands. And so, you know, I'm sorry to like, you know, just jump on this, but I mean, it's so closely related to North Dutton. I'd like to know, you know, what can be done about this and what's the plan? I mean, I've talked to multiple people over several years with zero results. Thanks, Stephanie. No, I think you've talked to me at one point. Um, I probably <laughs> so and and I'm familiar with the exact um, issue you're talking about and um, the 
there is there, there there was at one point a development that was being planned for one of the parcels along there and it was conditioned with that development to install a speed hump um, right across from the pork chop island in that northbound direction so as you were coming uh, in that northbound direction i believe there uh, a speed hump was going to be installed and that was that is probably one of the only places i think that we've uh, approved a speed hump to be installed i'd say in the last probably uh, five to seven years because the fire department is not allowing them anymore and they thought that this was an okay location to put one so um so we we were waiting for that development to go in so that they could put it in with their with their um as part of their improvement plans and so i will i will check in on that and I think I, st I still probably do have your email. So I will check back in with you um, once I find that information back. So thank you for your comment. Okay, the next person in our queue is Mark Mortensen. Mark, your, mar mark, your mic has been unmuted. You can state your name for the record if you so choose and then ask your question or make your comment. Great, thank you. Yes, uh, Mark Mortensen, I'm a West End resident. I live a couple blocks off of Dutton here on West 8th. Um, number one, just wanted to say I, I really support the plan. Um, I appreciate the efforts of you know the people who have provided input earlier in earlier meetings and and the efforts of staff to make this happen. A um, couple quick questions. Oh, I also wanted to say that you know if Eris Weaver supports it, then it's it's a good thing. So um, really appreciate that. Um, wondering if on some of the um, on some of the um, bike lanes that have um, that aren't protected but have uh, barriers there, um, the or that are sheltered. What's the terminology? Anyway, um, part of them, some of them were showing vertical uprights. Um, you know, just those little yellowish vertical things. Mm -hmm. um, wondering if it's possible for those to be installed on on the other ones that are not protected on the other bike lanes not protected. Um, that was one question. Other question was, um, what's the proposed speed limit for for the traffic going through there now? Um, you know, obviously it's fewer lanes, hopefully slowing down, but I didn't see any reference to that. Um, last question was, um, what are leading uh, pedestrian intervals? And uh, that was it. It would be great to get some landscaping in there on some of those um, areas where there are. Um, buffers you know maybe some areas that could be planted strips or something i know it's a cost but it's a big chunk of pavement running right through and very wide and maybe getting some greenery in there would be great uh again thank you so much great thank you so i think i got all your questions and i'll, I'll go through them as you asked them so the vertical um element that we showed was not shown on some of the buffers because um we need to provide a certain width for the street sweepers to get in there. And if we um, put the vertical elements, we need to make sure that there's enough room to still provide um, that street super access. Otherwise, we'll never be able to sweep the suite until we street the, sweep the street until we get a smaller street sweeper. So um, so that's the reason for, and, and I show the vertical elements in the center on uh, the nine foot buffer, which it, it may not be directly in the center, it may be closer to the travel lane, just to make sure that we have that room that we need to get the, the sweeper in there. Um, so that might be a limitation to the software that we're using to, to indicate that. Um, I agree, it would be wonderful to have some type of uh, something a little nicer than just the, the bollards there. It's that that's a huge cost difference. So we have to look at, do we want to implement this, implement it with the, the bollards or implement it with the uh, park, not parklet, a planter strip. Um, and the costs associated with those are pretty, pretty big. So um, I would rather install it sooner with the bollards and come back later if we can and install it with the greenery just to get it implemented. Um, but I'm I'm willing to hear from the public on that. Um, the uh, speed limits. So uh, I think I'm, I skipped the speed limit. So the speed limit is currently, I believe, 35 on this roadway. 
we after the design is implemented we resurvey it and see where the speed then lies and because uh, we do use um the 85th percentile to help us uh, determine what the speed limit is along the street, which is where we go out, we do a radar survey of the street, we take the information of what the, the 85th percentile is, and the 85th percentile is 85% of those vehicles are going at a specific speed or less, that means 15% are going at a, a speed a little bit higher than that. Um, and that's where we, that's what we use, and that's what the state uses to set speed limits. So there's also another um, bill that was passed. It's called AB 43, which has some other stipulations to it, which may help us lower the speed limit. Um, but the state is actually still working on some um, some language and rules on, on how to do that so that we can still use radar to enforce those speed limits. So yeah, yes, we would definitely be looking at the, um, the change in speed limit once uh, the, the improvements were implemented. For example, we've done that on Hopper Avenue. The speed limit there was 40 miles an hour with a very similar configuration to this. And we were able to reduce that down to 35 once the, um, the changes were made and um, we resurveyed that street segment. And then your last question was, what are the what is a leading pedestrian interval? So that's where we have the pedestrian actually, um, when a pedestrian button is pushed, the pedestrian actually gets served about five to seven seconds ahead of the vehicles being released from the queue. So it gives the pedestrian time to establish themselves in the crosswalk prior to any of the other um, uh, vehicular movements going in that direction. All right, Steve, we're ready for the next question. All right, our next uh, person in our queue is uh, Santi Lozano. Uh, Santi, your microphone has been unmuted, and you can state your name for the record if you so choose, and then ask your question or make a comment. Hello, uh, my name is Santi Lozano, and uh, just to give a little context, um, I'm the shop manager of Santa Rosa Tires Plus, right on the corner of North Dutton and West Ninth. So, um, you know, when I saw this, uh, this, this planning and, and the, the webinar, I was definitely very interested in joining in and just um, seeing like what's you know the plan for uh, this section of road. Um, I've um, grown up in this area, and uh, you know my business has been there for my family business has been there for twenty plus years. You know I've grown up like just watching the traffic and seeing um, you know the flow of traffic and and uh, just the, the overall general area. And um, also, you know, seeing a lot of traffic accidents in the intersection of West Ninth and North Dutton. Um, and so with that, you know, with seeing this over the years and um, with, the, with seeing the new, the plans for it, you know, I, I think it's definitely a good idea to try to s slow down traffic because not to be disrespectful to anybody, but man, the, tra the traffic through the, the area is definitely very fast. Everybody drives very fast through, through this intersection, through this area. Um, you know, it's just a very high traffic area. And so with, with uh, the new plans, I, I definitely think it's diff uh, somewhat of a good idea. I'm kind of like 50-50 on, on like breaking down the lanes um, just because it's such a tr high traffic area, um, I understand like adding the the buffering areas and the and and the uh, coned off areas for the bike lanes and that and eliminates one lane. But I just feel that that will add to the traffic of the area, and um, there's already so many inpatient drivers out there in this area that they feel like they need to speed they feel like they need to get to where they are going very quickly and that's that's just one concern that i have about the lane uh change for this area um and so that's just kind of like a little a bit uh, i feel like a big thing that um the area needs to consider when making these changes um 
I guess just one question that I have is if this is going to go through, when do you think that that would happen? Uh, just because I feel like with the construction of that, that may impact the businesses in the area. And, um, you know, because I feel like if there's a lot of construction and a lot of things going on, that may want to um, divert people from the area at the time to, to come into the area. So, you know, being that there were very, a lot of traffic, a lot of people coming to the area and you know, looking to come to our, the businesses in that area that, um, you know, that may affect, you know, business in general. But um, overall, I feel like it's, it's definitely a good idea uh, to add these safety things and, um, and, you know, just, just overall project of adding more walkability, more bike ability, and then kind of hopefully kind of slowing down the traffic if possible. But that's just my main concern is this area is definitely a high speed area. A lot of people definitely do drive very fast through this area. I definitely see being on the corner of North Dunn and West Ninth, see just accidents in that intersection. I see a lot of speeding on the daily. So I'm just hoping that this can help that. But yeah. then again, you're talking about a lot of, um, you know, there's still a lot of traffic that goes through this area. So sure. hope that can help. Great. Yeah. So I, I, I understand the, the concern about lane reductions and, and we don't take that lightly when we look at the different locations that we're proposing to do that. Um, this location, the, the volumes definitely support the ability to uh, have a lane reduction. Similar locations where we've done this over the years, just to give some examples, um, Mission Boulevard, we've gone from four lanes or five lanes to three. Calistoga Road, we've gone from five lanes to three. Those are both in the uh, 14 to 15,000 uh, vehicles a day. Um, they still have a very similar number of vehicles a day, if not even more, and they still flow very, uh, very well. So the volume is something that we definitely concern me for we look at before we even consider uh, modifying the lanes to that the the lane reduction but we also want to provide bike lanes obviously and 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 safety for all users and that's definitely a council goal that we have um the other thing you mentioned is you know during the construction how, how does that work we definitely notify all the businesses and work with them uh during a construction project in order to help uh, minimize the disruption it, it depends on what is going to be done as far as are we just going to be changing the striping or are we going to be changing the stripe because we don't have the funding right now I can't give you a when so um, but if it turns out that we end up changing the striping and we're doing a slurry seal or changing the striping we're doing a paving uh, job those will have a little bit more impact than just changing the striping on its own because they're much larger projects um, but at this point I I can't tell you exactly what that disruption might be or how long it may be, um, but you know we would be setting up uh, changeable message signs telling the public that there's going to be construction during these certain dates, during these certain times. Um, we can give them alternate routes through the through the area, um, and typically we main, we maintain at least one lane of travel through the area at all times because we need it for emergency response. We need it for our bus routes. We need it for people just to get to where they're going so we don't intentionally disrupt traffic just to to do a project we we try to make everything kind of cohesively work together so but i do appreciate your concern and i and i and i do hear what you're saying so thank you okay steve do you have any more comments we do rob uh chris eggers um your your mic has been unmute uh, has been unmuted uh, you can state your name for the record again if you so choose and ask your question, make your comment. Hi, Chris Eggers here again. Um, just one question I forgot to ask about what is happening to facilitate bicycle left turn uh, southbound onto Nice Street. So I, two things can be done. Currently, I believe we do have um cameras at the intersection that will detect a bike in the left turn lane uh the other option would be to do a two-stage crossing at that location if the person is not in 
entitled to want to take the left turn lane. Um, so they would do they would cross the street and then uh, either enter the crosswalk to cross or enter the travel lane to cross in the uh, eastbound direction. Okay, Rob, at this point, I see no more hands raised in the queue. All right, Does, if anyone else has any questions, now is the time. Okay, next slide, please. So moving on to the next steps for the project. So we will be taking this item to the Bicycle and Pedestrian Advisory Board on December 15th. At that time, I'll try to have a little bit more comprehensive um, striping plan layout for uh, for view. And I, I will, it, it's very hard to get a large uh, plan like that on us on one slide, it's almost impossible. So it'd definitely be several slides worth. Um, and then we did mention uh, about the budget that we applied and did not receive the quick build grant, um, but our uh, CIP or our capital improvement program is um, coming up so we will be looking at grant opportunities with that and other funding opportunities that we could um, potentially help help fund this project with or even segmenting the project into smaller pieces and segmenting and funding smaller pieces of it um, as we move forward so you can also um, find this presentation um, at the local road safety plan if you visit our srcity.org slash lrsp that's forward slash and next slide please you can also use um, contact me if you have any questions and Mike, we will leave this contact information up for you for um, say the next minute or so. You could write down my phone number and my email address. And if you have any additional questions, feel free to give me a call. And with that, I'd like to thank everyone for their participation tonight and thank the interpreters and our hosts. Um, and thank you for everyone for um, their input. I really appreciate it and value it. With that, thank you. Good night.